Hey everybody, Teresa Strader here. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, uh, I started National Mill Dog Rescue 17 years ago in my backyard. Um, it's been a fast and furious 17 years. Uh, we've rescued over 21,000 dogs from commercial breeding facilities during that time. Um, we get a lot of questions when we come back from rescue and even in between. How do you get these dogs? How do you know about these dogs? Where do they come from? How do you, how do you get them? Well, over these 17 years, um, I've built relationships to, I'm going to guess now, probably a couple thousand commercial breeders. Um, they come and go. Um, and they, you know, the relationship is built this way. You know, I'm not the dog police. I'm not the boss of what other people do for a living. These places are legal, legitimate businesses. Whether anybody likes that or not, it is, it, it is legal. Uh, business. They're inspected, they're licensed. Um, yes, the standards uh, have a ways to go for improvement, but at the moment, this is what it is. So, in my opinion, not really enough for dogs. So, this is why we started uh, giving these dogs an option to have a place to retire. So, the way it works is I work with several hundred breeders right now. Um, they will send me lists each day of uh, dogs that are getting ready to retire. So once uh, breeding life is over for these dogs, um, for most females between five and six, seven years old, they just can't make this number of puppies anymore. Um, and that's the end of the road for them. So if they don't have a place to go to retire, um, then they're euthanized. And that's just the way the industry has worked for all the years. Obviously we don't like that, that's why we're here. So the way in which it works, I have relationships that I have built personally with hundreds of breeders. Um, they let me know uh, on a routine basis when the dogs uh, that they're ready to retire are ready. And I just build those lists all the time. I have lists right now with probably over 500 dogs on them from maybe 50, 60 different places. Yeah, in the early days, I just made relationships with breeders. Wherever I could meet them, I knew a breeder who would take me to other breeders and just, you know, start building this rescue relationship. We're not going to continue breeding the dogs, obviously, so I had to tell them, you know, we can take them home, we can get them spayed and neutered and find them homes. And early on, 15, 17 years ago, no, I don't think any of them believed that anybody would actually really want these dogs. Um, but they're desperately wrong about that. We've rescued and placed over 21,000 of these dogs. Um, but anyway, so each day I'm getting input from different breeders. These guys are ready to go. These guys are ready to go. These guys are ready to go. Right now, as many of you see, if you follow us routinely, lots of extra puppies ready to go because they're not selling right now. Um, but anyway, every day I spend some portion of my time um, prioritizing dogs, the new ones coming in. Um, places that I may not know very well, so I'm not going to tell them they have to wait two or three months um, because I think a lot of them might not want to do that. Um, so anyway, so I prioritize as the lists come in uh, when we're going to pick the dogs up. Right now that's a really, really, really busy job because we're dealing with five, six hundred dogs all the time instead of a hundred or two hundred, which is what we're used to. So I build those lists, I make the route, and we pick the day we're going. And as many of you know, we have to use a lot of partners nowadays just because there's just so many dogs. Um, but that's it, we make the route, we, we build it according to the states we're working in and obviously what makes sense on the route. Um, yeah, and that's it. A lot of the dogs come to us by word of mouth, breeders telling other breeders that they work with us and um, relinquish the dogs to us. And they're very happy with you know, what we do with the dogs, how we find them homes, how we care for them medically. Um, and so they tell others. And, you know, not everybody we work with is horrible. We work with some really, really good breeders who take great care of their dogs. You can see when we come home and we're bringing them off the truck, you can probably see, you know, wow, that one looks clean and, you know, social and the other ones look scared and sad. You know, that's all uh, a reflection of where they came from. Uh, we work with every kind of breeder. I don't say no to any dogs. I don't care if it's the worst place you've ever seen in your life. But we want those dogs more than others, you know, because they need us more. So it's just a, 
um, take in all the information, start building the routes, uh, prioritize who needs rescue first or who was just simply next in line and get moving. And we're doing that right now by the, about the 10 days. Every 10 days or so, this is happening. So, and then out at our facility in Missouri where Beth is, um, she's doing the same thing I am. She's starting to get input from breeders out there and doing her own pickups. And we're also serving uh, lots and lots of dogs out there that just need help. And they may or may not be breeding dogs, but it's really hard to just, you know, drive on past an abandoned dog on the side of the road who might be injured, which happens. Um, anyway, so so that's it. They come to us, you know, through relationships. Um, that may sound and, and even seem and feel weird, but you can imagine if, if, if I go and get, you know, 20, 30 dogs from a breeder, and then we come home and I get on Facebook and talk about what a piece of crap that person is or how horrible they are, um, well, those, that person's not going to give us any more dogs. I mean, that's pretty obvious, so we just don't do that. And that's why we keep things pretty, just pretty flat in terms of our messaging. Like I said, we work with some people who take great care of their dogs, some people who take horrible care of their dogs, everything in between. They don't really all belong in one basket because they're not all one and the same. So across the board, we just try to stay pretty flat in our messaging. You know, we're, we're very grateful. The other thing that everybody needs to realize is none of these people, none of them, not one single breeder on this planet is required by anything or anyone to give us their dogs. We do not exchange money for these dogs. They, they readily hand them over to us knowing we're going to spay and neuter them, make them well, socialize them up a bit and get them a great home. And they're very grateful for that. So, you know, you can't, um, you can really only uh, deliver one main message. And my main message is these dogs need us and that's why we're here. And they deserve a place to retire as well. Um, no matter how they've been cared for, whether it's been decent or horrible. And we're very, very grateful that these people are willing to give us their dogs. So that's kind of how it works. And any questions you have, I'm always willing and happy to answer. Yeah, so leave any questions, comments you have uh, in the comment section below. And if we see a common themed question, we'll go back on and answer some more questions. So thank you so much for following us, supporting us. None of this happens without you guys. Seriously, your encouragement, obviously your support. Um, that's how this whole thing rolls. We've saved a lot of very needy dogs this way and we need you and we're very grateful for your interest in our mission and your support of us in any way, all of us. Very, very grateful. Thank you so much.